Hey everybody, this is Brian from PMB Homesteading. Thought I would do a little walk around the yard and show you the projects for this weekend. So let me take the camera here and show you. Let's see, let's go start down here. As you may notice, you'll see the uh, plastic here covering up some tomato cages. And I moved out the uh, Montesinos from the inside grow tents because they were getting so big that they tipped over. So I went ahead and brought them out and put them in their cages. And then I've got a little you know, greenhouse plastic over the top here. And I open it up during the day so that way it gets air and doesn't get too hot for them. But uh, you can see these guys are pretty tall and they need to straighten out because they had tipped over inside the greenhouse, underhouse, you know, indoor grow tents. So they're all planted out here now. And I'm gonna leave these out here and then I'll just pull the plastic down from up here and cover it up at night, you know, to keep them from getting too cold. But they should do okay. Here's the current bushes, some of them that we uh, actually propagated over the uh, last summer. Out of all six of these, well actually seven, we got six survivors. That one there didn't make it. They're doing okay. There's little Edgar, <laughs> one of our pugs. You can see the clover patch down here is doing really well. The new clover is starting to come and fill in. We just kind of let this grow and I'll come through here with a a weed whacker once in a while and my electric weed whacker and whack this down to a little lower height. Dogs like to run around in it and play though. They seem to have a fun time chasing each other. There's our comfrey. I'm going to be doing a chop and drop on that this weekend. I want all the different comfreys around the fruit trees and stuff like that. So I'll leave some of these though because those little bells that they have, they, uh, the hummingbirds really love these along with the uh, Bumblebees, they love going in here and getting the, getting the pollen. So if you want hummingbirds, plant comfrey. I think there's one over here. Let's see, where is he? I saw a hummingbird on here earlier. Let's take you up here. There's Benny. Hi Benny, what are you doing buddy? You getting some sun? There's the old crusty guy. That's Gus. <laughs> Got a bunch of our wildflowers coming up here. You can see our mint is really starting to fill in. Looking good. I've been taking this and putting this in our uh, French press and making our coffee with it in the mornings. Here's the goji bushes. Got two of those. There's sea berry. Got some aronia berry here. Another aronia berry. You guys have probably seen all this stuff before, but thought I'd give you a little tour. A bunch of the uh, variegated wagalas coming up in there. This is our Liberty Apple. We've got the cover crops going in the uh, garden boxes here. These are the cover crops I'm going to leave. And let those just go. And I'm going to plant tomatoes inside here. But these cover crops up here, I'm going to be putting plastic over the top this weekend. To uh, basically do a simulated chop and drop. And I'll drop all that nutrient right in there and help really boost the uh, activity within the bed with the microbes. And then it'll he help heat the uh, soil up before I put the garden plants in. I'm going to be doing that pretty much to all the beds. This is our blueberry patches up here. You can see there's a lot of fruit set going to be getting on those. That's our little wild area up there. And inside that red birdhouse, instead of birds this year, we've got a uh, wasp nest, which is going to be good for keeping down the uh, the predators for the uh, like caterpillars and that type of thing, because they're an attack vector on those kind of bugs. That's our salmon berry, looking really good. A lot of flowers on the uh, the red gojis, or not gojis. Those are the uh, jujubes. So there should be quite a quite a bit of fruit set on these, maybe. I'm hoping we only had a few last year. And we got some more blueberries here. Blueberries there. This is our Lee and Lang. Jujubes. That's the Lang. They're just starting to flower out now. 
a leaf out. Here's one of our beds. I'm going to be leaving this with the cover crop. I'll just be planting the uh, scarlet runner beans right back in there. There's another apple. That's honeyberry. Gooseberries. These look really healthy this year. There's one of our A-frame trellises. That's going to be for the spaghetti squash and that mound back there. And then all these boxes here, they're all going to get plasticed this weekend with clear greenhouse plastic. And I'll put rocks around the edge to hold the plastic down and it's going to basically just drop this cover crop right into there. It's going to really neutrify the soil. I mean, look at this. This is going to be great. Can't wait to put that on there. And then the ones I'm not going to put plastic on are like the, uh, the one with the columnar apples there. That one there's a columnar apple. Those two trees. I'm going to leave that as a cover crop open. And then that box back there I'll leave open. And I won't cover it. Because I just want to see the difference between if I let the cover crop go with the tomato plants and the eggplants. The differences between just doing a drop. There's a little sneak. There we go. I can go there. See that snake? That's one of the little garter snakes they have here in the northwest. That's how you know you've got a healthy ecosystem. You start seeing those little guys showing up along with the salamanders. They'll take care of your slug problems for you. Well, not too many, but we got quite a few slugs. <laughs> I mean, this is this is the Pacific Northwest after all, Slug Central. Let's see over here. Oh, this is the, I wanted to show you guys, this is the first year we've really had a lot of blooms on our Gala Apple. So, I mean, this looks really nice and the smell on this, this tree, I didn't realize this apple tree had such a nice smell. It's got a really, it's like a, a pungent, uh, I don't know, it's almost a jasmine-y smell. And there's some Apollos hanging baskets. And back here we've got our wildflowers all starting to come up. And then you can see the, uh, the currant bushes down there. Inside these little circles, those are all going to be clumps of currant bushes. So we're going to have currants coming up all through here. Along as a backdrop. And then we have our pear tree. This is the one I'm trying to make into an espalier. And then that tree right behind it, that is a nitrogen fixing tree. It's an autumn olive. And you can see it's starting to get ready to flower out. And it's going to get some... Uh, red berries on it that we, we harvest a few off ourselves, but most of the time we let that go to the birds for winter feed. And our almond tree back here, it's all done flowering. Should be starting to set the uh, almonds soon. And of course we've got more comfrey. Around all the fr fruit trees here in our yard we have comfrey. So, you know, we've got lots of that. And we got more apples, we got blackberries back there. Our grapes are starting to flower, along with our kiwis on this trellis back here. This is one of our flowering pollinator bushes. We let go. Yeah, see, maybe we got the, those are some new grapes we planted this year at each one of these down at the base. So, those will be nice. More autumn olive, another blueberry patch right here. I guess that's kind of it. And this is a big current, current bush area along with some raspberries down below. The raspberries are usually sacrificial for our pug, uh, Edgar, because he loves raspberries. But we've planted enough around the yard this year, I think, that we may actually get some for Paul and myself. But yeah, you can see all the flowers are starting to set. Those will all turn into uh, currant berry clusters. And these are white, white currants back there. And then the red currants we have are over here. And then, of course, we have the other ones, the ones that I propagated last year, all of these. They're all red currants. And the uh, plant propagation bed, it's doing good. I'm just digging out some plastic that I had left over from years past. I'm going to stretch that out and see how many beds I can cover with that. But uh, here's the propagation bed with the uh, water nozzles. I've got it set for every 10 minutes that sprays a 12 second mist using my Galcon programmed timer inside of there with a solenoid valve hooked to the hose. Just a regular old sprinkler valve. But they seem to be doing okay. 
And I've got two different uh, trials on the rooting hormone. One on the left here is rapid root. Uh, one over here on the right is take root. And I believe that's for garden safe. Can't remember who makes rapid root, but I wanted to do both types because last year in the propagation bed, those two dry rooting hormones seemed to do the best. The gel was okay, but it didn't seem to have the, uh, the yield of successful propagated plants that I wanted. So, but we're going to be doing the trial and these are both of these cuttings that came from a blueberry bush that's been in our family for about 50, 60 years. That's at my grandmother's house down in Astoria. That's going to be sold soon. She passed away last summer. She was 102 and a half. She had a lot good long life. A lot of blueberries she got off of that and the neighbors always used to love that bush in the backyard because when she had to move to an assisted living home, they actually went and picked them. And uh, they talked about how prolific and abundant the harvest was each year, as long as my grandmother. I mean, I remember going down there a few times and getting to pick them with her. So this is a tribute to her. So hopefully we'll get a lot of these to survive and we're gonna give these to family in remembrance of her. All right, and down here we've got the bamboo and then we've got where all those stakes are down there along the side over there. In between there are some more of those current bushes that I propagated. There's another one right down here. I'll give you a shot of it. Yeah, that one's doing really well. So, can't wait till those get a few, a few feet bigger because they'll start flowering and have more currants. And of course, we got comfrey all through here. And we've got a bleeding heart. Got my fruit picking ladder here stuck in the way. <laughs> That's kind of a tour of the yard right now. It's starting to really come alive for spring. Okay, well, this has been Brian from p and Homesteading. Hope you guys like that tour of the yard. All right, I'll give you some more footage for this weekend's videos. All right, bye guys. This is Brian from PMB Homesteading. I'm back here in the uh, backyard. It's Sunday, and I wanted to show you the garden boxes after they were covered up with the plastic. So you can see here's the upper yard up there. Those boxes have been covered by the plastic, as well as these lower ones down here are all covered now. I just used rocks that I had around the edge to hold it down, and uh, this is going to basically heat that soil up as well as kick off the microbiological activity in that box. And then when that nutrient begins to break down because of the uh, solarizing effect of the greenhouse plastic, it'll go right in there and start feeding the microbes, as well as heating up the soil. So it's going to be nice and warm and active when I put the eggplants and tomatoes and squash and everything else in our garden. All right. This has been Brian. P&B Homesteading. I'll talk to you guys again. All right. Bye.